back to my channel today. In today's video, we are going to be doing my eyeshadow collection and declutter. This is essentially a video where I show you guys which products I am actually keeping in my collection and which products I am decluttering or throwing away. I was fairly cutthroat with this declutter, so it may surprise you which palettes I ended up parting ways with. Some of them I haven't even had that long in my collection because I just already knew it wasn't a match. There are so many beautiful palettes to look at and talk about. We have a lot to cover today, so let's get started. This is a palette from Tarte. You guys can see this is the Be a Mermaid and Make Waves palette. This is now a palette that is discontinued. Now this palette, you guys, is super beautiful. You can see that. There's metallic golds and color in here. It's tough to let this one go because I just don't know. I haven't used it in a year though, so that's my first rule. Okay, let's put this in the maybe pile. So next I have Sultry from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Now you guys can see the inside of this one is super beautiful as well, but this is one that I have used a couple of times in the last year. Because it is also discontinued, I have to think about that and think about, okay, well, if I declutter it, it's not going to be something I can buy again. This is getting to the end of its lifespan, I'm thinking. It's been a couple of years, but I think I'm gonna hold on to it for now. This is also a palette I am totally going to keep. This is the Marc Jacobs Extravagance palette. And this is actually the only palette that I have used from him this year, I'm thinking. I do have a couple others that I can probably declutter, but this is one, you guys, that is so beautiful. I've raved about this so much, so this is definitely staying put. Here is one that I think I can declutter. This is the Huda Beauty Gold palette. I haven't had it too long in my collection, but you guys, ever since I did my review, I think I've worn it one more time. And even though this is a really pretty, like, girly palette, I have pink mattes like that and that brown mat like everywhere so I don't pick this palette up for that but when I think about like top coats and stuff I think I'm going for my Natasha Denona gold palette more so this is definitely one that I can say goodbye to tiny marbles from Sydney Grace this is my friend Mel Thompson's collaboration with the brand and because Sydney Grace is one I still hear you guys talk a lot about to me like you need to try more from the brand I honestly think I need to because this is a gorgeous palette and this is the one like I said with Mel. I do need to dip into this a lot more even though I have used it quite a bit but I'm going to keep this one for sure. Next we have the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice palette. I think I'm going to keep it because I do find some joy out of it but I'm kind of on the cusp. So another tip I have when it comes to decluttering is does it give you joy and if it does then you can keep it and if it doesn't then you should probably get rid of it. Kind of lukewarm about it myself so Let's keep this as a maybe. You guys are gonna be surprised by this one. This is the Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. Now this one is Eyes of a Star. Now that I think of it, this is one that I actually use second to least. So when I think about the three of them, I use Star Aura the most for sure. It doesn't give me a ton of joy and I know that I'm grabbing Star Aura a lot more. Here we have another palette. This is from Tarte. This is the Man Eater palette. This I know has been... <laughs> probably three years that I've had this one. I got this at Ulta in the States when I was down there for a trip. This is definitely a palette as well that I haven't had for sure at least one use in maybe one to two years now. Because of how old it is and because of the fact that I'm not grabbing it, this is one I will pass along. Here is one that will come to no surprise to you. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Rose Decadence Palette. Now this is one that I found was actually okay from her. I think she's getting better when it comes to the six pan palettes that she offers. Here we have the gorgeous colors on the inside, but you guys, I don't really use this one. I'm gonna be honest. When I'm grabbing for pinks from Pat McGrath, I am 100% mostly using my Mothership palettes, in particular the Divine Rose one and two. So this one, I think I'm definitely going to pass along. I wish I could just yank those shimmers out though. Can you see those two at the very end? <laughs> Maybe I will put that in a magnetic palette or something before I let it go. Here is a Marc Jacobs palette that I was talking about that I do have in my collection, but I actually don't use anymore. This is a limited edition one as well. It is called flamboyant. Here's the inside of this one. It's actually really beautiful. Has some nice khaki tones, I would say. That really nice silvery blue is beautiful. And the rest are shades that I have a ton of in my collection. This one is also a couple years old now, I'm going to say. So because of that fact, this one is also going to be passed along. Now just so you guys know, whenever I do pass along an item, it actually goes to my friends and family first. So that way things don't end up in the trash. Now the next one is this Naked Urban Decay Wild West palette. I actually just got 
this one and I did my review very recently on it. So this is one that I'm going to keep. Now, I do like the idea of the browns and the pop of blue in here. I think some of you found it just not very exciting, but I actually do like these tones because they're so everyday friendly and I do have a Urban Decay palette now with brown tones. I was missing that because I had to declutter my Naked One palette. It was so expired and that was quite a while ago. This is one that actually really hurts my heart to declutter, but it's so expired, you guys. I know I've had it for at least three years. It's funny because I said I'd be ruthless in my declutter and I'm really trying my best, but it's tough. <laughs> This is actually the second soft glam that I ended up owning. I used to have one that I used up and hit pan on quite a few shimmers. And this is my second one. So I ended up buying it twice. This is a permanent palette. So if I do want to get it again, I can, which is awesome. I have found that swatching some of these, the formulas are a little drier and that's not typical of Anastasia, which means that it is just getting old. So this one, unfortunately, I have to say goodbye to. Let's talk about this mini Zendo palette from Natasha Denona. This one is not going anywhere. <laughs> I just got this one and it's super cute. It's definitely one of her favorite minis that I have and it is a consistent mini. I just love how there's two mattes and three shimmers. It's the perfect combination for me. Definitely love this one. I'm also gonna keep this one. This is the mini retro palette. You guys can see that it is so cute and girly. This is actually my favorite springtime little five pan from her. I just love how the shades are so, so pretty. And I love that you can add that depth with that green and the blue. So this one is also a great mini to own if you want something from Natasha and you don't wanna spend a ton of money. This one is great. This one might surprise you guys. This is the shimmer palette from Mario. Now this is one I haven't owned for that long. So it does make me question, should I let it go? But I'm going to be honest, his palettes to me are good, but they're not something that gives me super exciting vibes to actually work with. Here's the shimmer palette, and it might have to do with the fact that I'm not a makeup artist. Maybe if I was a makeup artist, it would kind of make more sense to have an all shimmer palette and an all matte palette. But I do think I'm going to pass this one along. It is super beautiful. And if you want to try a Mario palette, I do think this is the best one to get. I'm not going to dip into this too, too much. So this is one I'm definitely going to ask if my friends want. <laughs> Here is another one. You guys can totally see me in the reflection. Hey, guys. <laughs> This is the Charlotte Tilbury The Icon Palette. This is one that I'm also going to shock you guys. I will be letting this one go. Hi, sweet baby. Are you here to help us declutter? <laughs> You're so sweet, honey. So here is the inside of the Icon palette. You can see there's quite a few shimmers in here, and this is kind of a similar idea to the Mario palette that I found. This is one that I really do prefer to have mattes and shimmers in my palettes. This is one that I do know will get a lot more love from somebody else, so this one I'm going to pass along as well. Let's talk about my first Natasha palette. I have quite a few. Oh, hello again. <laughs> this is the bronze palette. This is one I'm keeping, you guys, like hands down, absolutely will be keeping. So this is one I definitely need to use more. I used it so much in the summer and you can barely tell, but this is a beautiful midi palette if you love bronze tones this is definitely up your alley. Okay, guys, this one may shock you. <laughs> now, this is the Trio Chrome palette from Natasha Denona. The reason why I love this palette so much, actually, it's going to be a little sentimental here, but I love this palette more because of my story of how I got it versus the palette itself. So this is the Trio Chrome palette, and you can see here that if you love pastel, especially when it comes to green, purple, and peach, this is way, way up your alley for sure. I do think the formulation is there, and I think the three, you know, Trio Chromes in the center do have a nice touch, but this is a full size palette from Natasha and this is one that is pricier. So you really, really have to love this color story. The story behind this one is a subscriber actually sourced this for me in Selfridges in the UK. And now we've become such good friends that I've hung on to it more for that purpose and not actually used it as much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this to a friend. It literally came from love in the UK, and I know that's cheesy. I'm going to give it to someone to increase their positivity in their lives a little bit more and bring them some joy. And I'm just going to hold on to that memory. I just, I know we're going to be friends for a lifetime. So this is a palette I'm going to pass along. All right, here we have the mini love palette. Now this is actually fairly new as well. Not only is it like a couple of months old, maybe a month now. So it's very, very new, but this is also one that I really, really love. I have to be careful here because I do have quite a few pink palettes. So I don't want to accumulate too many, but this is one that I absolutely love. I think it's perfect for travel because it's so like tiny and cute. And I absolutely love 
the colors in here. Okay, here is another one that may shock you. This is the Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette. Now, don't get me wrong, the shades in here are super, super pretty, but this is one that I think I'm going to say goodbye to. This is one that was kind of in the middle when it came to, you know, sunset tones and sun tones with pinks, but I think this is a palette I'm going to let go of because I just haven't been using it as much as I would like. All right, here is the first 28 pan Natasha Denona palette, even though this is an old palette, like with regards to her releases, this is new to me. So this is one I only got very recently and I've like just used each shade once or twice, but I haven't used it nearly as much as I would like. This is a very, very beautiful palette and it has great purple blue tones. This one I'm definitely keeping. Now, speaking of, this is the other one. I will be keeping this one too. This is the green brown one. So you can see it has gorgeous tones. And I actually think that those like evergreen shades really bring out my brown eyes. So this is one I am absolutely keeping as well. I think it's stunning. All right, friends, let's keep going. We have my Marc Jacobs palette here next. I believe this is Glambition. Let me just double check. There we go. Glambition is actually a lovely neutral palette. And I do recommend this one for sure if you are someone that is kind of like a plain Jane and not in a bad way, just someone that loves those everyday friendly browns and beiges. This is one though that is at least four years old for me now. It is pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> For the expiry date alone, this one is going to be decluttered. Now, I will say, like I said, this is one that has very everyday, friendly, beautiful tones. I do like the gold and the brown in here. I just think it's a great, easy to use formulation as well. So if you want an easy formula and you're somewhat new to eyeshadow, this could also be a good option. All right, guys, here we have the infamous Aspen Ovard and Tarte palette. Now, this is a couple years old, so... <sighs> Should I let her go is the question. This is a beautiful palette. You can see that this is actually one that I've barely dipped into. I did end up buying two of them when I bought this palette initially. So this is my second palette. This is one of these catch 22s. I don't wanna use it because I wanna preserve it, but if I don't use it, I'm not gonna enjoy it and it's eventually gonna expire out. And I do think it's like probably pretty close to doing that. <laughs> so I will be using this one a little bit more and seeing how the formulations perform, but I can tell if they're drier or chalkier than Tarte normally is, then that means that something has already happened to them. And if that's the case, I'll be forced to declutter it. But so far, we're gonna hang on. All right, guys, here is the Charlotte Tilbury Holiday Palette. I believe this is from 2018. This is the Stars in Your Eyes Palette. Although this is a lovely palette, I do think this is one I can let go because I really haven't used it in a couple of years. I have other 12 pans from her that give me more joy at this point. It's also not available anymore, but I don't think I would miss it if I let it go because she has a lot of these pinks repeating in other palettes, and we'll talk about that as we go. I think it's just too old and I could live without it, so this one will be passed along. Okay, guys, here is the Diva Lights quad, actually, from Charlotte Tilbury. This is actually the one that I use the least, so this one, unfortunately, will be passed along, and because it is quite fresh, I think I'm gonna give it to a friend right away so they can use it right away, but I really just like the right side of this palette. I'm not super drawn to the other side. So this is one that, unfortunately, even though it's a great formula, if you love the eye filter formula and you want a different color story. My favorite is Star Aura, which is why I'm keeping that one, but the other two options are still consistent with regards to quality. This one will be decluttered. Now this is the palette that I'm going to keep. This is the Hollywood eye filter quad that I love the most. This is Star Aura. This to me is like the everyday subtle glam, if that makes sense. So I love the shades in here. It almost reminds me of the Aspen palette and not in the way where the formulations are the same, but the fact that it's very everyday friendly, like subtle glam, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So this is one that I'm definitely keeping. It just is like my eyes, but better. It is my favorite quad out of the three. Okay guys, this is really reflective. This is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. Obviously this one is staying. This one I've been told will be restocked soon. So I will let you guys know when that happens. But this is so beautiful, you guys. I love the cool tones in here. It's a great mix of matte and shimmer. So this one is absolutely staying. Do you love those colors? Because I'm obsessed. Let's keep going here. So this palette, you guys know I'm going to keep. I actually just recently gave away two of these palettes. This is the Fire Rose palette, I believe. Actually, <laughs> joke's on me. This is not Fire Rose. It has the exact same odor packaging. But this is Dazzling Diamonds. Now, I am going to give this one a chance, even though I will say that the right side of this palette is a little bit redundant to me. 
I wish she would have done a little bit more with the versatility with shades, but this is a palette that surprisingly looks beautiful on the eye. And I'm not saying surprisingly in, <laughs> I guess, a bad way. I don't typically go for palette of pop quads. So this one definitely surprised me. I'm going to keep this one because it was from this holiday and it is beautiful. In my makeup collection, I do have these two Alex drawers dedicated to eyeshadow, and I do not want it to fit anywhere else, honestly. I have the rest of the drawers for other makeup products. These two are eyeshadow only, and I'm only going to keep shadows that fit in here. I don't want to make more storage for makeup because, I don't know, I think I'm one of the only creators that does this, to be honest. A lot of people have a ton of makeup, but I'm just gonna keep it confined to those two drawers I love makeup, but too much of it makes me kind of crazy. <laughs> The next product here that I have in my collection that I'm thinking about decluttering, well, let's see. This is a Chanel quad, so I don't think I will be because it's fairly new. I just got this one this past Christmas. So this is another pink palette. So just keep in mind, there was quite a pink palette theme this year. So this is one that I do enjoy. I am going to be keeping this one because I don't have that many Chanel quads. So this is one that I'm excited to keep because I do enjoy it. This one has got to be Fire Rose. <laughs> this is the same outer packaging. This is perfect, Fire Rose. I think a lot of you guys slept on this palette kind of by mistake, <laughs> but it's okay because I have heard that it is coming back. This is one that I do want to cherish. So just like the Tarte and Aspen palette, I have to be careful because I want to use it, but I don't want to use it up so fast, but I also don't want to not use it and then it expires, right? So this is beautiful. This has got to be my favorite palette from Charlotte right now. This next palette is interesting because I love the color story. This is the Darling palette from Charlotte Tilbury. So this is a beautiful color story and I've barely touched it. So that's why I've decided to keep this one around for sure because this is one that I think I'm going to replace my Pillow Talk quad with. Even though I love that quad, it's getting really, really old so I think that I'm going to declutter that one when I get to that and then keep this one because there's very similar tones so I think I'm going to keep this one and figure out a way to open it let me know if you know without breaking nails because this closure for some reason is just like really really stiff so <laughs> but I'm definitely keeping it around. Here we have another quad. This is actually the Queen of Glow. This is really, really new to me. I ended up getting this one at a Black Friday sale through Beautylish, so this is definitely staying. You can see how beautiful this golden palette is with that really nice deep plum matte, but this is one that I've only used a couple of times as well and already known that this is quite a smooth, creamy formulation. This is one that I feel like is just a little bit better than some of her other quads. With regards to creaminess and how smooth it is, so this is definitely staying. So this is what I'm kind of talking about. This is the actual palette of pops that I have that I've barely touched. I believe this is from a couple years ago, but this is Super Sonic Girl, and this is one that I'm definitely going to be giving away. I don't see myself finding the inspiration to use it. I mean, as you can tell, it's barely been touched. So this is one that I definitely surprised myself with. I thought for sure I would be using these tones compared to Dazzling Diamonds, but for some reason, this is one that I haven't touched. So it definitely needs a new home. All right, guys, you're definitely going to know the answer to this one. So as you can see, it's very reflective. You can see my lights and everything, but this is Divine Rose 2 in the special edition packaging. But this is actually a 10 pan mothership and you can see that it's definitely a beautiful, beautiful palette. There are the Blitz Astral shades in here, which are her beautiful special formulas. We also have some creamy mattes. I do think these are the best mattes that she offers in these 10 pan motherships. So these are definitely worth the investment. And because she has so many sales all the time, which hint, hint, she actually has a sale right now. It's 25% VIP sale. And I do have a code to make it 35% off. So it's not my affiliate code or anything. It's just a code that works with the site. So I will link her website and I'll put the code in if you haven't checked it out. But definitely wait for her sales because they these go on sale and then they're definitely worth picking up at that point. Okay, so I have found Pillow Talk. This is Pillow Talk, you guys. It's one of her first quads I ever got actually in my collection. And this is a nice formula. But now that she's really expanded her repertoire with eyeshadow, I do find myself picking up other palettes from her compared to this one. So you can see it has very similar tones to the Darling palette and it's actually very well loved here. So it is one that is older now. So 
I think I'm going to let this one go, even though it's a fantastic one. If you have this quad in your collection, I'm sure you're enjoying it a lot. And I definitely haven't used it in the last year. So this one is going to be passed along. One thing I've noticed is that there are so many luxury eyeshadow palettes that have reflective packaging. Like how many times have you seen me now in the reflection of a palette? <laughs> Anyways, this is the Marc Jacobs Stiletto palette. This is also discontinued now. And even though this one is beautiful, I actually think I'm going to let this one go. And only because when I find myself grabbing silver, purpley, you know, cool tones now, I'm going for Natasha Denona's Glam palette. So even though this is a beautiful formulation, it's also a couple years old now. And so I think it's kind of on its way out. This one is going to be decluttered. Next, we have a Dior palette. This is the Five Cooler palette. And I'm just going to see if this is pink sakura or nude dress this is nude dress there we go so this is inside of nude dress and you can see how stunning it is it's actually a beautiful everyday palette i do love that sparkly cool tone pink in the top left corner and i love the matte in here it's just so so stunning for every day the five cooler formulation i've talked about before it is dior's best this is definitely staying I just spotted the other Dior palette that I have, and this one is also staying. This is the Pink Sakura Limited Edition palette. I believe it's only on Selfridges now. If I can find a link, I will link it in the description box. But this is like a palette that I pick up when I really want a beautiful purple look. And it's nice because it's really sheeny and really glowy. So this, like I said, the Five Cooler formulation, definitely Dior's best. This one is also sticking around, and it's perfect for spring. This is my Charlotte Tilbury Instant Eye Palette. This is the Pillow Talk 12 Pan Extension Palette. Now, she did this one because of the success of the quad. So this one definitely offers some similar vibes. We actually have more mattes than shimmer, believe it or not. That's kind of different for Charlotte. So this is one I'm definitely going to be keeping around. I do think it's very everyday friendly, and I love that you can have, like, that cranberry pink look like the deeper pink but also the more muted pinks in the far left here we have another Chanel quad now this is one I just recently hauled actually this is the golden meadow one and this is actually only available at Chanel UK right now I believe and maybe some other European boutiques now I still have to continue my testing on this one but this is a beautiful warm tone quad I think it's perfect for spring as well I will be keeping this one because of course I still have to do my review but I will let you guys know something that I already know about. So this is one of them, and the other one is actually this one here. This is the Bouquet Ombre one. Now, looking at them side by side, you can see this one also is very warm tone. Of course, they're different in shade, but... I don't know, that matte brown is pretty similar in both. They are different. I did do a side-by-side -side comparison in a previous video, but I just know myself. I know one of them is going to go after I have played with both of them. I feel like I won't have the need to keep both. So I'm gonna pick my favorite out of the two because they are so similar. I just don't wanna have too similar of quads. All right, I have to talk about this one. This is the Celestial Divinity Palette from Pat McGrath. This is by far her best cardboard packaging palette ever. And what I mean by that is that sometimes she tends to not only skimp out on, you know, packaging when she has this cardboard, which is totally fine, but I find that the formulation on the inside can also be bad sometimes or not her best. The quality is definitely there with this one. The mattes are so, so creamy here and the shimmers are stunning. These these are not her Blitz Astral shades, but they are still really, really high quality. So this is definitely staying. The next one I have here is the By Mario. This is the matte palette. This is one I'm going to declutter. I already know. Same justification as the first one. I'm going to be honest with the all shimmer palette. I just don't see myself grabbing this as much as I think I would if I was a traveling makeup artist that had a kit. So this is one, although really good quality, and if you are wanting the, you know, Makeup by Mario brand experience, I do recommend and this one or the all over shimmer palette like I talked about before but this one for my personal preferences and my personal use I think is going to be better off with somebody that will give it a lot more attention this next palette is mini gold I'm definitely keeping this one these shimmers are stunning I think the mattes are creamy I think this is just a very easy to use formulation so this is also a good one if you're looking for a good color story if maybe pink doesn't really attract you as much this is a lovely one if you want to try out her formula. This one is definitely staying. 
All right, guys, here we have the Tom Ford Soleil Neige holiday palette from this past year. This one is called First Frost. Now, I really, really love the shimmer quality of the Tom Ford formulation, and I also love the cool tone-ness of this palette. <sighs> it's kind of like a maybe. Like, I'm really struggling with this one because I know how good it is, but I also know that those icy pinks and whites like that I can probably get from Glam and other palettes. This is obviously still a good palette, but that bottom row, you can tell that there's very, very tiny differences in the shade of brown there. So this one might, might get cut. We'll see. Now here's a Tom Ford quad that I know I'm going to keep. This is my favorite one. This one is Honeymoon. So this is a beautiful one. You can see, I feel like every shade has a place. So even though this one is probably ugh, maybe two years old now, it's getting older. It is one I still use a Ton, and so far the formulation hasn't changed on me like it's not like it's different or I've noticed anything kind of funky with it so if you are wanting to know if a palette is expired a definite definite way to know is if there's like something growing in it <laughs> mold or you know a discoloration of some kind chuck it immediately guys don't even just don't even think about it sometimes the change in formulation as well or if it emits a really weird smell because you know then mold is probably on the way so this is a lovely one I'm definitely keeping it and you can see that from the first frost one compared to this one there's more versatility so this one is a clear stay so here we have my other Tom Ford quad that I've kept around this is the body heat quad this is one that I also have haven't used in a little while, probably because I'm grabbing Honeymoon more than this one. But I think I am going to keep it because it does have more distinction than the first Frost one does. And this one is just, oh, I just think it's sultry and beautiful. This one is staying, but I don't think I want to keep all three. So I think I've decided to declutter first Frost. This is a palette that I actually have really enjoyed. This is just one of the quads from the Anastasia collection. I think it was from 2019. This, okay, it doesn't have anything on the back. Although this one is also discontinued now and it is super pretty, this is one that I haven't used at least in the last year. So this one will be easy to let go of. I wanna talk about this one. This one is mini nude from Natasha. I'm gonna open my drawers here and remind myself what I'm keeping. I am keeping these two big Natasha palettes. My minis, I already have four. So these are all really beautiful. There's lots of pinks actually. Now I have glam. What was the other one? Bronze. Mm. Ooh. Okay. You know what I want? I want her to make a big palette of this. <laughs> this might be the only palette that doesn't have a midi or a large companion. Ah, uh, what should I do? I think I'm going to keep it because I'm hesitant. Yeah. Even though I'm hot and cold on this one, I'm just going to keep it for now. Okay. We'll spot tons of mothership palettes coming. So this one is the bronze seduction palette. Funny story about this one. I got it. I ended up getting rid of it. And then it actually was packed again in an order that I purchased from the site. It was not something I ordered again, but it was packed in the package. <laughs> So this is one that is fresh to me. I got it just after Black Friday by accident, like I said. The Blitz Astral shades in here are the ones that stand out in my opinion. I think I'm going to keep this because I feel like it was fate for me to try it again. <laughs> Here we have the Naked Heat palette. Now that I have the Wild West palette, I just don't know if I want to keep this one too. This is one that I keep wanting to give more love to and just never do. It could be that I have lots of other palettes that really give me these sultry looks like the Natasha palette, the Tom Ford palette. Yeah, and this one's like barely touched, you guys can tell. So I think this one is going to be passed along. I actually know the perfect friend that would want this one and give it a lot of love. So this one... I'm just going to let go of. Let's talk about the Biba All Neutral Palette from Natasha Denona. This one is interesting because I guess if I think about it, the mini nude is probably like the best companion for this one. And I grab that one so much more. It's one thing to have all of these palettes, but you need to use them too, honestly. I love Glam so much more. And the mini nude palette, now that I think about it, I think I'd probably get more use out of. And this one's a big palette. So I think I'm going to give this one away. Just remember that these aren't bad palettes. It's just, how much can I personally use as one person? And even though I'm a reviewer, it's just like impossible to use all of these palettes to how they deserve. So even though this one is lovely, I think it's just, it's time to pass it along. Here's another one from Charlotte. This is the Exaggerized Quad. I do think I'm going to keep it though, because actually out of this one and Pillow Talk, I use this one a little bit more, believe it or not. 
So it is different enough from the Star Aura palette and it is one that I think is just like a beautiful everyday glam palette. This one is going to stay. Next, I have the Lila palette. I am definitely keeping this one. So far, the formulations have actually been consistent. You can tell that I wanna give this one more love. I think the reason why it's not as loved as it should be is because I introduced Biba and then I kinda had some pressure to use Biba too. I think I'm gonna keep this one because now that Biba's gone, I'll be able to use some of these mattes a bit more. These purples are stunning and I do really like this palette. This one is obviously staying. This is the Tartlet Juicy palette. I'm going to do a quick Quick follow up with this one, but so far so good on the Tartlet Juicy palette. This is one that if you love the Aspen tones, this actually has some very, very similar tones in here. So this is a lovely one. I actually recommend Tarte to so many people, especially beginners, because the formulation is just so easy. It just blends itself. And this of course is staying. I'm going to be doing more follow up thoughts in a future hits and misses. Here we have one of Pat McGrath's quads. Now this is Interstellar Icon, I believe. None of these unfortunately are her Blitz Astral shades, which are those beautiful shimmers, but this one is still beautiful, honestly. I really, really love this one. This one surprised me for sure. It isn't usually a color story that I'm really like drawn to, but this one is absolutely beautiful. Here we have another Mothership palette. I'm just gonna open it up and see which one it is. Ah, yes, this is Sublime. This is one that I also got on sale, which makes it even better. <laughs> I got this one for 30% off. This was also Black Friday. So this one is definitely sticking around. Like I said, do not buy these palettes full price. She has sales often enough that you can wait for sure and get really, really good deals on them. Now this one is Ritualistic Rose. This is actually a quad of her Blitz Astral Special Creations. Now this is from 2019 already. So it is getting up there, but it's still fresh to me. It still performs really well. There is fallout with these. So just do your eyes first, but I actually use this as a companion palette to Divine Rose 1 a lot. So this is one I'm definitely keeping around. Since this is my last Mothership palette, I know that this is the Divine Rose 1. And this one is my favorite, you guys, honestly. It is just so, so stunning. This one I get the most use out of. I think it's a soft glam. It's super beautiful. I think that these shimmers are beautiful. I think that the duochrome you can see right there is beautiful. When people ask me which Mothership palette I recommend, I always say this one because it's just my favorite. So it's definitely staying. This is also a Blitz Astral quad. I'm trying to remember what this one is called. I think it's Nocturnal Nirvana. I have Interstellar Icon now with that deep blue that I grab more. Because this is the Pat McGrath Blitz Astral shade, I think I'm going to let this one go. And I know that's crazy. I just, I need to be more cutthroat with my collection. This is just insane. <laughs> So this is one I'm going to let go of, I think. This one I believe is called the Iconic Illumination one. I just think this one is much more my style. Oh, that's tough. Okay, this one is definitely staying. Now here we have one from this past holiday. This one is Risque Rose. Now believe it or not, Risque Rose is the only one made in Italy. The other two quads from last Christmas are made in the US. So even though this isn't technically Blitz Astral Shades, for some reason, the creaminess of these two mattes as well as the two shimmers, they just stand out to me compared to the other quads that she's done that are made in the US. So I feel like the formulation, whatever she used, I don't know, it just seems to be a little bit different. So even though that really bright pink, I don't really grab a ton, I'll be honest. I love the right side of this palette. That's enough for me to keep it. It is limited edition too, I believe. So this is one I will definitely keep. Let's talk about this Charlotte Tilbury palette. This is the Eyes to Hypnotize, actually from 2019. Uh, should I? I keep this or not? I'm trying to think going through all my steps. Have I used it in the last year? If I'm honest, the answer is no. Are there similar shades in her other palettes? Absolutely. The only difference is the greens and the blue. This one is going to be tough, but I think I'm going to let this one go. This is my last Charlotte in my collection right now. This is the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize from this year. This is one I've used a lot, a lot more. So you can see that the golds are a little bit similar to the Eyes to Hypnotize I just showed you. The purple trio is a little bit more, you know, Jenna friendly, I would say. And the nice thing about this formula compared to the Eyes to hypnotize one is that when you wet your brush this one looks really really beautifully foiled those shimmers just honestly ignite when you have a wet brush 
So I think I'm going to keep this one for sure. I'm definitely confident on that. The other one I can for sure let go of. This last Pat McGrath palette that I have in my collection is Fleur Fantasia. Now, this is one that I really need to give more love to, especially in the spring, because this one was released this past holiday as well. It was made in the US, so although it is good, I wouldn't say it's my favorite out of the three. I find I haven't been using them just given the fact that it has been, you know, winter right now. And this isn't really a look I'm going after in the winter time. <laughs> it's still really beautiful though. So this one is staying for now. Let's talk about the sunset palette. Now I just got rid of sunrise. I just find that orange is not something I'm grabbing on a regular basis. The shimmers are though. So these shimmers are similar to the ones in bronze, which is why I've decided to let this one go. Finally, we have the gold palette. Now I'm going to show you guys all the the palettes I decluttered at the end and then my final organization of everything. So gold, I'm definitely keeping around. Gold is actually a very surprising palette. The shimmers in here are stunning, honestly. They are bar none, some of my favorites. The textures, the finishes, she actually does gold so well in this palette. And I'm not wearing the mattes as much, as you can tell. I'm usually just dipping into those shimmers. But this is a palette I am absolutely keeping around because it's just so pretty. All right, guys, I had to show you this because it's so cute. Harvey has fallen asleep. <laughs> I've decluttered quite a few. I'm actually pretty surprised. I decided to let go of Pumpkin Spice. You can see that it's in here. And this one I decided to let go of too. This is the Nocturnal Nirvana, just because I like my other ones better. Here is my organization now. So you can see that everything I can see, it's visible. It doesn't go too far back in the drawer, which I appreciate. So I have everything here. It just looks perfect. You can see that I still have a ton of Natasha palettes though, but that's good because she is one of my favorite brands. In this second drawer, I have all of my Pat McGrath palettes and I have all my Charlotte palettes. So this is my completed eyeshadow collection and declutter. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Thank you so much for watching and until my next one, take care and stay safe. Bye guys.